Hey folks, so today, welcome to Guns, Knives, and Beer. And today we're in the Rocky Mountains. We're at about 10,000 feet or so above sea level. We're gonna go with Disney. We're gonna take a trip up um, one of the uh, old mining roads here. Um, can't really walk too far with the boot on. So we're gonna go up, try and head into the woods, into some of the back area, back country areas. Uh, set up a little lunch and uh, talk about things as we move along. So hope to see you real soon. Stay tuned. Okay, so we're gonna head up this old mining road here. Hopefully see a few ruins and then we'll head up into the woods here. And I don't think we'll make it all the way to the lake today, but uh, Disney sure could. Right, Diz? Now, normally, in a good year, where my foot wasn't bad, I would be mountain biking up on a trail that's up there, about 11,000 feet. Pretty cool little area. This is uh, along the Rocky Mountains, the continental divide of the United States. So. Uh, what you're looking at right now would be the west coast and where I'm standing here in the back of the camera, well that's the east coast, pretty simple. Um, pretty cool area, lots of trails, lots of places to explore, lots of backwoods, BLM land that you can do all kinds of fun things on. And um, yeah, so we're heading up one of the trails that ties into the Colorado Divide Trail, um, which is the trail that basically spans the entire state of Colorado along the Continental Divide. So, uh, pretty cool. Stick around. Very high concentration of iron here in these rocks, which is or isn't a good sign for other precious metals. Well, we already know there is gold and silver up here. There are several mining camps and former mines um, from the gold rush days of Colorado back in the 1800s. Pretty cool. It's a really remarkable place here. Um, again, you see it's actually Monarch Mountain in the background there, topping out at about 11,000 feet. Um, and we're at about I don't know, a little over 10,000. Uh, hankering up this old mining trail, which is quite steep. Um, I would not want a mountain bike up this. Uh, got a nice creek going down in the bottom. Hopefully we get to a part of it. I'll to show you that as well. Stay tuned. Tizzy. Water? Come here. Come here. Good boy. It's important to uh, carry enough water for yourself and for the dog. This is an extremely dry climate, although it doesn't look like it at the time. It's actually been quite a rainy year here uh, in the mountains. Um, it's still an arid desert, and um, you know your water evapor evaporates real fast. Uh, so I carry a big pack even for the day trips um, with enough water for me and for Disney, so important stuff.
Always on the lookout for birds. <laughs> Season's only a month away, buddy. For those of you wondering why he's got the vest on right now, that's actually a chest protector. Uh, he likes to jump over things and uh, has been impaled a couple of times with sticks. So uh, rather than have that happen, he wears a uh, little Kevlar vest to kind of protect him. Oh, he's cornered a squirrel. Uh, an a bear squirrel. They're pretty neat. So aggressive. But, uh, yeah, he's, he's got it up a tree. It's not a bird, Disney. <laughs> Most of the trees up here in this area are lodgepole pines. Uh, have a lot of pine bark beetle issues. These seem to be semi-healthy. Um, there's also some scotch pine, white pine, and uh, a little bit of uh, Douglas fir scattered around and throughout as well. You're not going to find really any hardwood trees. Uh, you know, maybe in some of the more open areas near a lake you might find some gamble oak. Um, but other than that, um, you'll find um, aspen trees. So, no aspens here though, but there's usually pretty big groves pretty much all over anywhere that the lodgepole pine have either succumbed to fire or the, the pine bark beetle and the aspens will take over again and uh, help recreate the forest. Circle of life, right? I won't violate any copyrights. So that up there, that mountain, that is Mount Princeton and it is 14,000 something feet in elevation. Uh, you can climb to the top of it. People do. Obviously I can't do that right now. Um, but you can see where the uh, tree line obviously stops. Um, so yeah, one of the 14ers in Colorado and we have quite a few of them. So if you've never been to a 14,000 foot mountain, uh, come to Colorado. What you find? <laughs> so here we have a lot of newly fallen aspen tree and it looks like they were cut down. Uh, it's a good opportunity to grab a piece of wood to carve a spoon. So I'm going to take it. <laughs> Okay, this looks like a good opportunity. Nothing's very straight. Um, kind of like this piece right here. There's a possibility. Uh, one knot. Oh, that's a big knot in it. Yeah, that's the problem with aspens, is they get pretty knotty. Uh, hmm. Let's keep searching. Okay, I found the piece I'm gonna, gonna grab. I'm gonna cut the middle in between those two knots right there. Yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Although, eh, yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Okay. Ah, success. So, nice piece of green wood. We'll make a spoon out of that a little later. I never take anything that's standing.
Okay, so I thought I'd stop here, show you the ruins of a actually pretty big cabin. Uh, I would doubt it's a miner because of the size of it, but it goes from all the way over here, all the way over here. I don't know, probably almost 100 feet wide. So that was a pretty significant house at one point in time. Let's see if we can get some closer shots. So here we have some poles, probably from a staircase, I would say. Well, I thought I would be able to climb up with a boot, but that's not going to happen. But you could see it goes up way up there. And then you got another huge foundation wall right down here. Scoots all the way over that way. And then, this is the interesting part, comes all the way down here and in behind this tree what looks like could have been I mean I don't think this was a wall it might have been a storage area or something but all kinds of corrugated tin roofs around so putting it at the late 1800s early 1900s maybe pretty cool Okay, so I just noticed that actually going down from the house quite a distance, I'd say, I don't know, 60, 70 yards, there's this, another foundation. Without killing myself, I'm trying to get up here. Remember folks, I have a boot on surgical boot. Okay, a small cabin, very small, overrun by trees, but uh, yeah, not a huge foundation, but just down the ways. So, I don't know, maybe the main house could be the person who owned the claim, because uh, there was one or two big claims around here at one point in time, and maybe this How's the workers? Although, why would you work when you can go and stake your own claim? But anyway, thought I'd share this with you since it just popped into the corner of my eye. Stay tuned, we're gonna go grab some lunch. Uh, this looks like a great place to set up a little camp, have a little lunch, uh, maybe even do a little bushcrafting and process that piece of wood that I cut before. Um, it's nice to take somebody who's already set things up, so we'll just get things started here. Gonna give Disney some water and then uh, discuss the next steps. Need some water, buddy. Again, I carry extra water and his little bowl, so it gets well taken care of. Mm 
day I was actually going to use uh, the bush stove. However, like a dummy, I forgot to bring my cup. And I was just going to have, I don't drink coffee, I had some really good hot chocolate. I was really looking forward to having it, even though it's hot. Um, but unfortunately, I did not bring my tin cup. Got my pot, boil the water, but I have nothing to drink it out of uh, because I used it yesterday for beer. This is guns, knives, and beer, and well, yeah, I used it. Now, I We'll fit in a beer review in the middle of this. Won't be from this campsite, but. Welcome to the guns, knives, and beer. Beer segment of the video. So we try to squeeze in a beer in the middle or so of each of the videos that we do. And uh, so today we are in a different location, a special location. Uh, we are in Colorado along the Arkansas River. There we go. Yes, in the good old Yeti cooler, keeping it nice and cool. I think we need to uh, check out what's in this uh, can here. Oh, -ho. hoppy, hazy, and smooth. What? Okay. Uh oh. Uh oh. Could be from Kanukistan. Mmm. Nope, it's not. Vermont. Good old East Coast. We have a East Coast transplant Vermont double IPA from New Image Brewing. Wait a second. I'm pretty sure they're not in Vermont. No, they're not. <laughs> Colorado. Arvada, Colorado. A couple of East Coast transplants decided to open up a brewery. And so here it is. This is a Colorado brew based upon brewing techniques on the East Coast. Ah, what do we got here? Double IPA, I'm expecting some significant alcohol. And, and you're not going to see that. 8.5%. 8.5. And it's it's not for leaf peepers, by the way. Good boy. <laughs> Brewed in Colorado. Arvada is a suburb of Denver. Uh, just along the foothills, right by the mountains. Uh, not too far from our location here. Well, three hours from our location here. Anyway, let's get this... Back into the can, opened up, try it out. I'm gonna do the old pop. Here we go. Good. Wow. 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 The wa the waft of hops and citrus that came out of that thing is amazing. Wow. I mean, that, that hit you right away. Holy cow. Wow. Oh. Mm. All right, folks. You'd expect the double IPA to be a little harsh with all the alcohol. Uh-uh. No way. Not at all. This this is nice. Well, they're not kidding when they say hoppy and smooth, but there's more citrus than anything else in there. But I have no problem with that. Um, yeah, I could down a few of these pretty easily. Probably not a good idea, but... Well, there you have it. Uh, East Coast Transplant. Vermont Double IPA. From... Arvada, Colorado, along here on the Arkansas River. We'll see you next time. Stay tuned.
I was going to start a fire. There's no bugs. There's no reason to really start one. So, we'll let that go. But, I do have some lunch. Pretty simple. Some... Bianco de Ori Italian dry sausage. Not sausage, salami. Salami. Whatever. But, yeah. Here's my hot chocolate. Arm it. And my pot. And no, I don't think I can drink out of it. Oh well. Okay. Let's enjoy some lunch. I wonder what these are going to taste like. Ah. Pretty mundane. What's that for salami? Ah, there we go. Nice. Preparation, right? But I forgot my cup. But I got my cutting board. Now we did have a pretty good breakfast, but what the heck? Hey, Diz, come here. Oh, that smells good, Disney. Mmm, yum yum. Yeah, if I weren't doing any cooking, I really would have liked to have that hot chocolate. Not gonna happen. In terms of water, I do bring a hydration pack, about two liters, quite heavy. I mean, there's obviously water that I can filter and boil. Um, I just like the security and obviously I have to have some extra water for the dog as well. Now, will he drink from the streams? Yeah, not necessarily a good idea. Um, there are definitely a lot of microbes floating around in there along with Giardia. So, you really should, I mean, a dog system you can argue it's a little different than a human system. You don't want to get Giardia in you. Uh, dogs can f can pretty much live with it, but if you can avoid it, you should avoid it. Um, so I carry water for him too. For those of you who are watching the channel, I really appreciate it. Uh, you know, I'm starting. It's it's all new. Trying to get my bearings straight with this. Um, getting out with the boot on it was a little tough. Uh, but I don't know when you're watching this, and you're probably watching it a long time after this boot will be off. Um, but as of this video, I've only got one week left. So hopefully I can make a lot of fun out of the fall season, which I have to say is my all-time favorite in Colorado so you know we'll get out to see the aspen leaves changing and the golds and that's really uh, the ultimate time of the year so I appreciate you watching uh, stay tuned there's a lot more coming up on guns knives and beer 
obviously I'm sure you're all waiting for the gun review it'll come there'll be lots of them um, one thing at a time right stick with us if you like it please click the like button if you don't go ahead and click the down the dislike button doesn't matter if you like watching these if you want to learn if you want to get more information I'm not a teacher by any means keep watching hit the subscribe button it down there so if you click on my little logo that'll subscribe you um, yeah and we'll see you next time so stay tuned lots coming up appreciate it see ya good really good.